Hey everyone, so you've made it to the final episode where we're gonna go over how to stream out your VTubing avatar with OBS. So this is going to be a pretty bare bones tutorial. There's tons of tutorials and information out there about how to use OBS to stream out to Twitch and YouTube. So this is really about how we get our live viewer windows from either Unity or Unreal into OBS and what we found the best practices for doing so are. Also, because it's a little messy that we're using two versions of OBS at the same time, I'm not gonna be in a live mocap suit. Instead, I'm just gonna be piping in a pre-recorded Rococo animation from Rococo Studio, but the workflow is going to be exactly the same if I was actually in a mocap suit. Okay, let's jump into it. Okay, so we're gonna start with Unity. And if you recall, this is kind of where we left this scene in episode seven, where we got this workflow up and running. You can actually go download this project file for free from the episode seven description. And we have our game panel detached here. And if we go into Rococo Studio, I just have this sample animation running in the background, but I do have our live stream for Unity turned on going out to port 14043. So this is acting exactly like it would if there was a suit, you know, in the scene, a live suit. So if we hit play, everything's gonna come across, right? We have our, our, our uh, facial mocap and our body mocap with our hands, everything's working. And the nice thing about having these be split is that if I want to change the camera position or something like that in real time, it makes it really easy. Um, and so when you get more complicated scene setups, maybe with multiple cameras or something like this, this allows you, this split screen kind of setup allows you to have two systems in place. Okay, so here we are, but how do we get this into OBS and isolate out our avatar? So if we open up OBS, it's gonna give us a warning because we're already running one instance of it. If we open up OBS here and let's turn off our display, let's make everything black. And what we're going to do, normally what I do, is I take this game panel, I'm gonna make it pretty large, and I'm gonna go and put it over on my second display. So now this is essentially covering the entire second you know, monitor of my computer. And if we go back to OBS, and we add a new display capture, and you could also use a window capture for this and just capture the window, but if we add a new display capture, we choose display two, and there we go. We have our output from Unity, you know, uh, going in OBS. So what we can do that's super easy is we're just gonna go to this display capture. We're gonna go to filters, and we're gonna add a chroma key. And by default, chroma keys are green. So you can see immediately we get a clean version of our avatar. And this looks great. You might need to change the you know background color if say you're working with a green character. But in general, kind of that's why chroma key is what it is. Uh, chroma green is what it is, is because it's it's rarely used, you know, in, in character design and things like that. So we exit out of this. Now we have, you know, a character that is semi-isolated. But as you can see, we still have all this other junk that's on our, you know, the background of the second display. However, if we hold down Alt and grab the corners here, we can crop out this other stuff. And we are left with a perfectly clean avatar that, you know, the classic position would be to put it in the corner. And now we're ready to go. And so at this point, you know, we have just a typical OBS scene. And so you would stream this out to Twitch or YouTube Live you know, you know, you'd set up your, your stream key and everything uh, the same way that you normally would, right? What we wanted to do is get to this point where we can have an isolated character on screen, you know, that has, that's been, the background has been keyed out and we could layer in whatever we wanted behind her. You know, in fact, here, let's go and grab, I have just a screenshot here. And if we were just to throw this on just to see what it looks like, boom. Looking good, and also the nice thing is because we have covered the entire second display, the resolution of our character looks really good. So we can make this a lot bigger and we're not gonna lose a lot of fidelity. 
So that's how you would go about doing this for Unity. Now let's jump into our Daz 3D teddy bear project in Unreal and do the same thing there. Okay, so here we are in Unreal and we have the same kind of thing set up, right? In Rococo Studio, instead of having our Unity plugin turned on, I've got my Unreal Engine plugin turned on. I'm streaming out this pre-recorded mocap just on a loop, just so we can see what it looks like. And here we have our bear against our green background. And I'm actually gonna move this plane back a little bit, just because I don't want the bear shadow to be interfering with our green screen, right? If we go to our camera, we've got everything framed up, framed up looking good. So how would we go about you know, adding this bear to our OBS. So what we have right here is just a single viewport, right? With our teddy bear in front of its green screen. So we're actually gonna exit out of this camera. And what we wanna do is create another viewport, which is gonna have our main camera's display. So if we go up to window, viewport, viewport two, and then we hit play and we eject, and then go to perspective, camera. Now we have a viewport where we can go in and still manipulate where this camera is in real time, but not mess up this viewport right here, right? And we're actually just gonna hit stop. We're gonna move this camera back a little bit, just cause I wanna be able to get rid of this text right here. And we're just gonna fix these focus settings to make sure our bear is still in focus. Maybe we'll move down, just tilt the camera up a little bit. Okay, so our bear is looking good. So now how do we get this viewport into OBS? Well, it's gonna be very similar to what we just did in Unity. Essentially, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna expand this viewport out on my second monitor. Then I'm gonna open up an instant of o instance of OBS. We're gonna get this warning because we're already recording. We're gonna turn everything off here. And then we are going to add we turn everything off, we're gonna add that second display capture. Create new, display two, and here is our bear, right? So from here, you guessed it, we're gonna add a filter, chroma key, it's automatically gonna be green, and right out the bat, right off the bat, it's gonna do a pretty good job of keying out our bear. Looks pretty great. And we could go into those settings and tweak them a bit more if we wanted to maybe feather it or adjust the settings a bit. So at this point, we can just simply crop out the rest of the screen. And there we go. We've got a bear avatar that we can put down in our screen right here. And uh, we are now ready to you know, stream this out to YouTube or YouTube Live or Twitch or whatever we wanna do. And we would just put our gaming footage or whatever else we were looking at uh, behind this, you know, alpha character in OBS. The other thing that's great is again, because we have all that resolution of the second display, right? It's a really big window. We can scale this bear up and you're not really going to notice any quality loss. So of course, that's how you get your avatar into OBS, you know, as a clean uh, alpha plate. But you could of course always do the exact same thing and just have a fully you know, interactive environment, kind of like what Code Miko or Pixelfire does. They have you know, in intricately built digital environments that their characters are sitting in and that allows them to maybe interact with the environment or you can play with uh, lighting a little bit more and atmospherics and gives you a couple other options as, as well. So how would we go ahead and do that? So here we have our bear in just, you know, a uh, environment that I got off of the Unreal Marketplace, you know, for I think a couple bucks, um, nice and clean. But this is kind of more what you'd see from Pixelfire or Code Miko, where they have their avatar in a fully digital environment so that they can maybe use physics objects and, you know, put their character you know, bouncing around with a bunch of cubes and stuff, or, you know, generally play with the lighting or have fire dynamics. You know, if we wanted to go and add some fire to this scene even, let's go to starter content, particles, grab some fire. You know, if we wanted our bear to be on fire, you know, it's a real-time engine, so you can do uh, pretty much whatever you want. Go to our actor here. 
now we have, you know, we got our bear on fire. Um, this is how you would kind of, you know, put your avatar in a, um, in a digital environment. I actually really like this a lot. So how would we get this into OBS? Well, you know, it'd be very similar. Let's eject out. The fire is killing it. And we are going to create a new viewport under Windows, viewport two. And here it is. And if we hit play and eject, we can then go in viewport two and align with our um, <laughs> align with our camera. You know, pilot our camera. And uh, you know, this this still has some environment stuff that needs to be built. But what I do is is, is again go and expand this view out on my other desktop, and I'd open up OBS. And we would go and add that display capture again. We're going to capture display two. We've got our bear on fire here. And we could just kind of resize this if we wanted so that our bear fills up our scene. And there you go. Now we have our bear. Uh, in a digital environment in uh, OBS. And what's really cool about this, again, because we have two viewports, we can go into this viewport and we can grab the camera and you know move it around in real time. If we go really close you can, and we jump back into OBS, you can see that our camera is now really close, right? Here, let's actually, we'll split view this so we can see what's going on. But yeah, we can grab this camera, move it around, get it back into focus distance. But you can do lots of, this is where the really interesting VTubing uh, work comes into play, right? Because at this point, what you're essentially doing is just game dev, right? You wanna do a bunch of different things to um, have your character interact with, or maybe you wanna have your chat trigger events. That's all gonna happen in a digital environment like this. And again, all you really wanna to do to make this happen is maybe split off an extra viewport so that you can still look at your main level and, and affect it while, while not interrupting this viewport that has your, you know, your, your avatar on it. And then learn a bunch of Unreal and Unity so that you can code in some interesting elements, which is for another time and for other tutorials. So that is one possible workflow for getting your VTubing avatar out of Unity or Unreal and into OBS and up streaming to your favorite platform. Again, we hope that this VTubing course was useful. We tried to approach it from the perspective of a complete beginner while still containing enough information to be useful for people who have already been in the VTubing game. If you wanna know more, you can always jump into our Discord, the link for which is gonna be in the link below, or you can check out the Rococo VTubing doc that we've compiled, which has links to all of our favorite VTubers on YouTube, as well as lots of other tutorials to help you on your VTubing journey. Stay tuned for lots more fun VTubing stuff from Rococo, and we can't wait to see what you guys do with this VTubing course. Thanks so much, everyone. See ya.